Hey everyone, it's Charlie Morgan and welcome back to another video. So first things first, I do apologize for the robe. Um, I've just got out of bed to record this video. Uh, you might be able to tell throughout the video, but I'm not very well. I got a bit of a, a cold or something. Um, not feeling too great. I've just sort of been, been in bed, but I have things to do and consistency is the goal, right? So regardless of how I feel, I'm gonna get these videos out to you guys. Um, because it's an important thing to do. So today I wanna to talk about how to how to actually structure a discovery call. Um, and I'm gonna sort of be walking you through how I um, actually like approach calls. Um, what, like I, I see discovery calls, not as entire calls, but I see them as segments. Um, and when you can observe, when you can see discovery calls in terms of like little segmented sort of chapters, um, things get a lot easier and you can sort of work through the call in a more linear fashion and just being all over the case. Um, I've probably done about 1,500 or 600 discovery calls in the last few years. Um, it's really been my main and only job um, for basically really about three or four years now. Um, and so in that time, I've had to sort of devise and build a sort of predictable and, and systemizable way of conducting them to keep myself sane, but also to keep my results predictable. Um, so I'm able to convert at roughly 40 to 50% now, um, we're pretty much regardless of the lead quality or the niche, or obviously there's some differentiating factors. Sorry, by the way, I haven't got too much energy today, um, but I do want to get this video done. Um, but like there's, there's, you know, I've been able to sort of like, once you get a real predictable structure in place, um, for discovery calls. And once you start repeating it as a process, what happens is results become very predictable. And like, if you do the same thing over and over again, you'll get the same result. And that's actually a good thing if you're getting the right result. So I basically can observe back through my data over the last 12 months, for example, and conclude that my average conversion rate does sit like, you know, <clears throat> like 40% or something. Um, and so I basically hop on calls and I just do the same thing every single time. And um, that revolves around having a structure. And so today I actually want to walk you through the structure. Um, when I was selling done for your agency services, my um, conversion rate was actually a lot higher because it was significantly easier to, to sell that because it was selling, you know, sort of one to two K a month retainers to businesses making a significant amount more than that. Whereas working with agency owners, there's a lot of financial issues and um, obviously there's a lot of fear around that as well because there's a lot of shit in the market you might be been burned by before. So I'm going to hop into my computer now and just basically map out how I structure discovery calls. Um, and I want to just sort of walk you through each segment just in brief form, just to explain like my philosophy for each segment and, and how I conduct them. Um, for those of you that don't know who I am, uh, I should have probably introduced myself earlier. Uh, my name is Charlie. I built and scaled a marketing agency called Northlow Consulting. And now I help other people build and scale their own agencies. Um, we've scaled two businesses to seven figures in the last few years, and I'm now helping over 180 other agency owners build and scale to six, multi-six, or even seven figures through systemizable and predictable client acquisition systems. If you don't have like a reliable way to book appointments in your agency, then you're going to really be fucked. And if you haven't got that, then you need it, and you need to do everything you can to build that system. Because if you haven't got appointments, you haven't got oxygen. If you haven't got oxygen, you're going to die or your life probably won't be very exciting. Um, so if you have got a problem with booking appointments and getting clients and then closing deals and feeling comfortable to actually go out and get business, um, then you probably should book a call with us. And that's not just, there's no bullshit like webinar or case study funnel. There's a link in the description that takes you through to a landing page. It is a funnel. It's designed to sell you things, right? <laughs> We're into more marketers here. But on that funnel, there's a video of me talking a bit about how we um, help agencies and some other stuff. And then you can look at some testimonials and just book a call. Like the worst thing that happens is you don't buy and just come away a little bit more intelligent what to do than you did before. There's no pressure. There's no incentive-based pricing. There's no bullshit. We just basically see if you're a fit. And if you are, we sell you things. And if you're not, we don't, right? And if you want to buy them, you can. If you don't want to buy them, you don't have to. It's no pressure. Anyway, that's the little plug aside. I thought I wanted to get that one in there. Because if you're watching videos, on how to conduct discovery calls, um, then there's a chance that you don't know how to conduct them, which probably signifies that you haven't done them to enough volume enough to have enough. If you haven't had the volume, then you won't actually know what to do, of course. And so that implies the problem of appointment booking. So if you can't get appointments, go and click that link because it's probably going to be the single best thing you do for your agency this year. And I'm just, I actually mean that. It's not just something I'm saying because I'm supposed to. So let's hop into um, the computer here and walk you through how to actually structure discovery calls. Um, this also helps you remove a lot of the fear to do with sales. It'll just give you more predictability. I know like I've got, I think like four or five meetings lined up for the rest of the day. Um, and like, I'll just follow the same process every time. And if you book a call, you'll probably learn my process firsthand. So I'll see you in the computer. Let's hop in now. 
Okay, so let's hop in. So once again, I do apologise for the dressing gown robe, but you're going to have to put up with it. <laughs> just for this video, I promise, maybe Wednesdays. Um, but let's talk about a discovery called structure, because if you haven't got structure, you haven't got consistency. And if you haven't got consistency, you haven't got business, right? You're probably just a freelancer without really any like structure at all. So basically, um, I split my discovery calls into five parts. Um, and they're very distinctive, and I know them like the back of my hand, and I've probably been through these five parts 1,500 times and it, they work really well. So I'm not going to keep this video too detailed. I want to value your time here, but I do want to sort of just explain the, the basic structure of each part and my philosophy for each one. And then we'll go from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of draw like a line here that would denote about one hour, right? So let's, um, let's do this. So how about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, well, let's, let's just say this is like this is like an hour, right? Um, and then this is like, obviously, zero minutes. Okay, so really, the, the, the first part of the call is, is probably about this short, right? Um, and this is where most salespeople just fuck up immediately. Um, the first part of the call is here, and this is really just like, I just call it an intro, right? The intro is, I'm not even kidding, it's like, it's like 30 seconds long. So let the person will hop on the call and I'll be like, hey, where are you calling from? Are you based? Oh, awesome. How long have you been living there for? Great. Well, I'm, I'm here in London. Uh, listen, we could discuss those cities for a long time, but let's talk about your agency. How about we get started? And then I'm in, right? I'm not, not fucking around with football scores or like news or politics or trying to build rapport. Rapport is just like, rapport is just pain avoidance and procrastinating getting to the shit that actually matters and any salesperson that tells you you need to build rapport at least in this industry is is an idiot because it doesn't work um they don't need to trust they don't need to like you they just need to trust you right and trust is is embellished in pragmatic pragmatism and also having someone's best interests at heart and if you start asking all these questions about them so it's just a load of rubbish just don't bother if you spend more than a minute like introducing yourself and just saying hey and asking them a bit about themselves you're wasting time and it's inefficient I like my calls to be efficient. I like them to be no more than an hour long and I like to close them all in the, in the first call. If they, don't, if they don't want to buy on the first call, it's fine. They don't have to. However, like I'm not going to be... Like, I've seen sales reps before drag calls out for like one hour and a half, two hours long and it's just, it's just unnecessary. It's just stupid. So that's the first part. The first part is the intro. This is part one. It takes really... Um, it really takes like literally one minute and anything longer than that is procrastination. The next part of the call is probably one of the longest, um, and I'm going to sort of draw like here, like this. Um, this is part two, um, and part two is the discovery, right? So the discovery really should take probably about 20 to 25 minutes. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm basically asking questions. Now, what th literally all I'm doing is asking questions. That is it. There is no, that nothing else comes out of my mouth during this 20 minutes than questions. Um, one of the biggest mistakes I see salespeople make in the agency space is trying to have a conversation and people believe that sales calls should be conversations. They shouldn't be. Conversations are inefficient and they're a waste of time and they don't achieve anything except from confusion, right? And a lack of efficiency. Um, I, have, I have a line of questions that I ask and there's usually about um, 20 of them, maybe. And I'm basically just going through each question, letting the prospect answer it. Then I say, okay, and then I ask the next question. I don't add anything onto their answer. I don't question anything they ask, like unless it's relevant to the line of questions I've got. Um, and I'm basically just sitting there. Like I start, I do the intro and then I say, okay, so I'm gonna ask you some questions about yourself and your agency to see if you're a fit. And if it looks like you are, then I'll explain what we do and we'll go from there. How does that sound? And then they're like, okay. And then I'm like, okay. And then I launch into my first question. And then for that, until I finish my line of questioning, I won't say anything else. I won't judge the prospect. Like if I don't think they've got enough money, I won't tell them. If, if it sounds like they're a fit or not, I won't say anything. I will complete my full analysis with every single question I have before diagnosing and pitching them. And if I don't think they're a fit, I won't pitch them. I'll get to the end of all my questions. And then I'll say, okay, John, so I don't think you're a fit for us. And then they'll say, why? And I'll say, well, because of this. And then I'll list all the reasons from the questions and then say, 
what do you think about that? And if they can overcome it, then they, I can pitch them. So I don't pitch everyone. I only pitch people that I can help, right? Because you want to sell out of people's best interests. And if you're not doing that, then you're just being an idiot, right? You're just being greedy and probably operating out of scarcity. Um, rare is the salesperson that can actually say to the prospect, I don't want to sell you anything. And I do this quite often. So if I'm talking to someone and like, I'd never use money as like something that doesn't make them a fit because people can find money. But if it's like mindset, or character, or belief systems, or some other shit like that. Like I've had someone before say like, you know, he believes that cold email doesn't work and cold messaging doesn't work and nothing works. And I was like, okay, Steve, I don't think you're a fit. And he was like, why? And I was like, because you've just told me that you don't believe anything that we do works. So why would I pitch it to you? And he said, well, I'm open to hearing about it. And I was like, okay. So sometimes you have to overcome their objection before you pitch them, otherwise they'll just object. So. Um, that's the discovery section. Really, the, the secret here is just basically silence. And what I mean by that is silence on your part and having the discipline to not add things on. So if they say, oh yeah, I'm really struggling with Facebook ads, we're not gonna go into a five minute rant about iOS 14 and telling them we can help them because all of this is confuses them. We want, we want a line of questions that basically calibrates the prospect's mind to have enough emotion, enough pain, and enough awareness of their situation and problem to then latch on to whatever we tell them next, which is obviously the solution. So that's part two. Now part three um, is probably about, I'd say they've run this long. Um, so discoveries, like, so really the, the intro is negligible because it's the minute, it doesn't even matter, but the discovery section is like 20, 20, 25 minutes. And then part three here is the pitch, right? So the pitch, um, I would probably say, is probably gonna be about like five to 10 minutes. Um, really like that's it um and then what i'm doing is like i'm sort of transitioning i'm using transitioning statements to go from segment to segment i'm not just asking questions and pitching straight away i've obviously got ways of you know transitioning and segueing the conversation but the pitch comes next and the pitch is really important um the the absolute so i'm just going to sort of list out the, the 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 most important point to each of these and, and this one this one over here i'm just going to make a note is conciseness the results. Sorry, I just need to make a note of the next point, main point, otherwise I'll forget. I won't forget, but I'm just articulating it will make sense. So silence is the most important part to hear. Um, this is this is like short. This is the most important part to the intro. However, the most important part to the pitch is conviction. It really doesn't matter what you say. It matters how you say it. Um, so like what I'm doing here is I'm basically explaining exactly what we do and how we can help them. Um, and I'm doing this with so much conviction. I'm, I'm basically stating the result like it's a fact, and which it is. So like if someone buys the Imperium Agency program, they're gonna get to the goal they want to get to. It's probably gonna take them a long time or longer than they think they can. So I've got a guy who came on board the other day. He was like, I wanna get to 50 grand a month in the next 12 months. And he was making like two grand a month at the moment. And I just said to him, I was like, look, that's not gonna happen. You gotta give yourself like two years for that to happen of consistent work. Like we can get you to 15 to 20 grand a month in 12 months, but we cannot get you to 50. Now we might be able to, but I don't want you to even think that that's a possibility because all that's gonna happen is you're gonna end up disappointed. Would you be comfortable if I say we can get you to 15 grand and actually do it instead of get you, get you to try and say we can get you to 50, but you don't do anything because you're discouraged. And he was like, actually, yeah, I think 15 is fine. And then maybe if I can keep growing it. And I was like, yeah. So this is like an example, like, and then that way I know that I can get someone to 15. Like if you're, if you're making like a couple grand a month at the moment, and you buy our program and you do it every day for a year, fuck me, you will get to 15, 20, 25 grand a month in 12 months. If you don't, something's seriously wrong, either with like your inability to do the work or something else. I mean, the program works pretty much for every single person that does it if they do it consistently every day. Um, and that's just a fact, right? So when I'm stating this pitch and pitching people, it's not like I'm trying to sell it to them, I'm just telling them facts. <laughs> I'm like, so we've got 180 clients. Our refund rate is 0.4%. Pretty much everyone that does this gets meetings in the first two weeks. Pretty much everyone that does this get meet clients in the first two months. Pretty much everyone that does this adds like six figures or multi-six figures within six months. And then like, so it's just, it's not even like a pitch. I'm not trying to be all salesy or hypey. I'm just like stating facts basically. So my pitch is very, very concise. Um, and there's just basically, it's just underpinned by conviction. It's like, if you do this, you'll get the result you want. The main secret to a pitch is conviction. And the, also, the other secret to it is to leave out details. 
So what I mean by that is you don't want to go into the details of what, how you do what you do, right? You need to just basically keep what you do. You need to explain how you do it, but keep it really high level because the last thing you want is for prospects to get bogged down in details because details inhibit decisions, right? They might be important to some prospects and certain details might be, but the worst thing you can do is have a 30 minute pitch that explains every single little piece of the puzzle, including what colors you use for creatives or you know, what, what lead magnets you use or some shit like that. Like it's just so irrelevant to the prospect's mind that they, and I'll explain why in a second, but your pitch should be really no more than five minutes. Uh, my pitch is slightly longer because the program we have is pretty insane. It's got so much shit in there that like, we have to basically take time to explain it. And we've also got so many results, they take a long time to explain. Um, but your pitch should basically just be high, a high level view of your process and then explaining your guarantee and then any, any results you got. And if you say, oh, Charlie, I don't have a guarantee. Well, you're an idiot. You're not an idiot, right? You're not an idiot, but you need a guarantee because prop businesses buy confidence and guarantees are confident. So that's the pitch. That's section three. Section four is probably another sort of like, this is this can really be like five minutes, I think. Um, and this is answers, right? So section four is answers. So what, what's going to happen here is... Um, like your, your prospect's going to start asking you questions about what you do because your pitch should leave out details, right? It should be like high level and basically not, not give too much detail away because the prospect doesn't need to know everything. So what we do is we basically leave out like information. So the prospect has to pull it from us. And so I state my pitch and then I just shut up and then say, hey, I'm happy to answer any questions. And then what the prospects will do is they will ask you questions to amalgamate their knowledge of how, what you do and what they need to know. But the most important thing is they'll ask you questions about what they need to know to move forward. And they won't ask you about the price or the next steps until they fully understood what they're buying or investing in. So the beautiful thing here is that they're just gonna keep asking you questions, but the questions that they ask will be focused on what they need to know to move forward. So you might think the prospect needs to know what fucking type of landing page or funnel you use to get them results, but they probably don't even care. They probably don't even think to ask. And by telling them, all you do is you add another thing to their mind that they should potentially be doubting, right? So we don't tell them these inf these details. And if they want the details, they need to know them to move forward. They will ask us and we will tell them. Now, the secret to the answers is to, um, this says conciseness and results. So the secret to answering prospects questions post pitch is to have nice, short, concise answers and to not tangent and also to ev bring everything back to results. Everything, right? So if a prospect asks, oh, so Charlie, what color landing page do you use? I'd say, oh, well, we use this shade of blue specifically. And the reason we do that is because it gets the best results for clients. And that's how we're able to deliver even more insane results than anything you've seen before, right? So like you answer the question and then you basically link it back to how the answer helps them get the result they want. And what this does is like, when the prospects are asking questions is they're storing information in their mind about what you do, but they're gonna store it against two things. Does this help me or does this not help me? And they'll, do, they'll use their own paradigm to decide whether or not they think what you're doing is actually good. So you need to basically state what you, like state your answer, but then back it up with conviction and evidence. So like, oh, Charlie, like, um, what's, how long are the Loom videos? And I'm like, well, they're short. And they're short because we tried them for a few agencies and we tried longer ones and then we found that short ones work be much better. And we even found that like the shortest they were, like the better they worked. And for example, like Luca, who you just saw, added 40K a month to his agency in a few months using the shorter Loom. So we decided to stick with those ones and improve those. And you shut up. So and then you just shut up and then they ask you another question, right? And then once they've asked enough questions, they'll ask about the price and then you, you tell them the price. And then comes my favorite part of the call, which is number five. And this is really where salespeople fuck up, right? Objections. Objections are like the, the single most important thing in a sales call. Anyone can introduce themselves. Anyone can have the discipline to ask questions in silence. Anyone can pitch with conviction. Anyone can answer questions and you know, be, be results orientated and, and concise. However, most people really can't handle objections, right? This is where most people really go wrong. Like the prospect's like, okay, that's all the information I need. I'm gonna go and think about it. Or I'll go and talk to my business partner about this. Or yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, like, let, me, let me sleep on it. Or I need to do this or I need to do that or anything like this. This is where most people go wrong with, with is, is objections. And pretty much every agency's bottleneck is objection handling. And it's not a business problem, it's a personal problem because the reason the agency isn't handling objections is because you're not handling objections. So you don't work on this from a business perspective, you work on this from a personal perspective. Um, and really like objection handling is the secret and it's the most important thing. And I've, I've observed many salespeople try and do many things and the place they always fall short is objections, right? So you've got to realize with objections, there's, there's either you're buying the prospect's doubt or the prospect is buying your confidence. 
right? Once we've got to, once we got past this point, the prospect is no longer buying your product; they are buying your confidence and their confidence in your product. So, if someone pulls the trigger to work with you, it's because they feel confident you can deliver what you say you can deliver, and that will be dependent on your tone and how you present the information. It will be dependent partly on the information itself and how it aligns with their paradigms. It will also be entirely dependent on the results you've got and also the guarantee that you've got. If you haven't got results, you have to have a really strong guarantee. And if you have results, I still recommend you have a guarantee. They need to trust you, they need to have confidence and all objections are a manifestation of doubt. So if someone doesn't think you can do what you can do, then they'll just object and say, I wanna think about it. But in reality, they're just saying, I don't trust you, I don't trust your product, and I don't believe that you say what you can do what you can do. But they won't tell you that because people are afraid of conflict, and so they just manifest some sort of bullshit. Um, and then you think, oh yeah, you just need to think about it, I think you'll buy, and they never do. Um, my observation is that if people don't buy on the first call, they rarely ever buy, um, which is why I'm so relentless with my objection handling. And um, anyone who's bought my course through the YouTube channel will know this. You guys probably still watch my videos. There's a lot of clients that we have on board from YouTube and they're crushing it. And like they go through this channel, they book a call, they get all the information they need and then they're like, oh yeah, I've been fucked over by this guru before or I just, yeah, I like it, but I wanna just do this. I'm like, why? And they can't give me an answer and they end up buying. I'm very good at objection handling, by the way, so be, beware before you book a call. Um, however, I'm gonna be hiring reps soon, so it won't really matter. But um, the point is with objection handling is like if you can actually solve someone's problem and change their life, then you must stop at nothing to handle their objections. So I've had objection handling, really this this thing, it depends on how good you are at wrapping these up, um, but I typically found that objections can really be like 10 to 50 minutes. Um, sometimes I've had objection handling sections last out for like fucking 45 minutes, um, but I can usually wrap them up pretty quickly, 20 minutes tops. Um, and then the key to objection handling, um, God, there's lots, um, but really I think the main one is just um, is just relentlessness, right? And what I mean by this is just don't take no for an answer. Um, like you just have to basically, if, if the prospect keeps objecting, you keep on persisting. It really is the only secret to objection handling is just staying on the call and consistently keeping the conversation going. Um, there are times when prospects won't be able to buy, like they haven't got the funds, they haven't got the money, um, or there genuinely is like something they have to do before they buy from you. And sometimes I'll respect that. So like if, if I'm talking to someone and they've got a business partner and like I think they're telling the truth and their business partner's not on the call, first of all, that's my fault because the business partner should be on the call because I schedule the damn thing. But like if I'm talking to someone and they're like, hey, like I haven't got any money in my account, I'm like, well, how much have you got? And then they tell me something and then it's like pretty evident they just haven't got the money. And that's not an objection, that's just the truth, right? And sometimes people won't be able to buy from you. And sometimes people won't buy from you, no matter what you try and do. But I had someone the other day who was like, he was, he was on the phone with me for like, at least like 35, 40 minutes with his objections. And I was just attacking from every angle and like he knew that he should buy the thing, but his ego just wouldn't let him basically. That was really what happened. Um, like he didn't like, his ego didn't like the fact it was a course and that, he even said this, he was like, yeah, I just I just don't really think I'm, I'm in a position to, to learn from someone. And I was like, what do you mean? He was like, well, I just, like, my, my mind just doesn't like, like buying things from people who like are younger than me and I just don't want to buy a course and, you know, learn things. I was like, well, then you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> I, obviously he's not, it's just his ego and I'm, I'm just, my, my temper's quite short today because I'm ill. But like, I didn't say, he's not an idiot. What I, what I meant to say there is like, well, you're always going to be an idiot because you're never going to be smarter than who you currently are. So that's, I didn't mean it in like an insulting sense, but like in the regards that like, if you haven't got the humility to buy something from someone that can help you, then you're being an idiot because, well, how else could you define an idiot as someone who doesn't want to learn something that solves a problem? So that was the point. And I was like, well, if that's really how you feel, then hell, like I can't help you because even if you buy the thing, you won't listen to what I tell you to do. So I just sort of said, yeah, that's not a good fit. So like, that's a funny story, but those are the five parts of a discovery call. Um, and if you line them all up and you do them all properly, you'll be able to close at like 50% without any difficulty. Uh, it takes a long time and a, hundreds of sales calls to get good, um, but it's a pretty rewarding thing. So like I can look at my, if I pull up my calendar here, what you'll see is, is a bunch of events for, I've got like seven tomorrow, seven or nine, seven to eight on Wednesday. And like I know that if I do 10 discovery calls, I'll probably close four people. Um, and so like now, like you can, you can reverse engineer this. So like if you convert it 30% and you're selling a product for $3,000 and you book 10 calls, then you're gonna close three people, which means you're gonna make $9,000. And what that means is that each call is worth $900.
So like as soon as you, once you get this consistency in your business, you can start like projecting your income and realizing that all you have to do to make money is book calls. So that's really how it works for us now. Like I book a call and I see like $2,000 or something. So every single call that we book is worth like two grand, which is pretty insane. So like this really puts shit into perspective because if we didn't have this nice consistency and if I was winging every call or having a conversation, God, it really, it really pisses me off. It's such a weak and stupid way to sell to just have like, because conversations are so unreliable and by nature they're just tangents and like, it's just, there's no direction, there's no conciseness, there's no efficiency, there's no respect for the prospect's time. Um, and also it's just, you can't duplicate it, you can't scale conversations, you can scale a five part process that's been proven to work for over 1,500 calls. Now, for those of you curious, like we have obviously way more training on how we conduct calls and stuff in our paid training program. And if you're interested, obviously, in learning about that, you can just go and book the call um, and you can enter our pipeline and funnel and see our sales process firsthand. Um, but it won't surprise you. It's pretty simple and straightforward. It's just the way we run it that makes it work. So that's basically how I conduct discovery calls. Um, that's my five-part system and process. Um, that's it. You just introduce yourself. You say, hey, a little bit of micro rapport. The key here is just to keep it short and sweet. You don't talk about... American football, you don't talk about your favorite pizza restaurant in the same city that you went to when you were five or any of that crap, you just keep it short. And then you go into a 20 to 25 minute discovery call mode where all you're doing is asking questions and then that's it. You didn't tag anything on, you don't add anything on, you just discover. It's not about you, it's about the prospect, right? If it sounds like a fit, we pitch them for five to 10 minutes. Um, and then like, we just do this with loads of conviction and then once we've pitched them, we obviously leave a lot out and there's some, it's pretty vague, but it's also driven by conviction. It's results driven. So they start asking questions and then we keep these, the results, um, sorry, we keep the answers to the questions concise and link them back to results. And then inevitably objections will rise. How you see the objection will determine how you handle it. So I'm at the point now where like, if someone chucks an objection at me, I'll be like, yes. Thank fuck for that. Because I love them. I really love objections. Maybe call me a psychopath, but like they're my favorite thing. And so like, imagine the difference between me and someone who sees an objection is like, oh God. Like, you know, if you, the way you see problems will heavily influence the enthusiasm and confidence you have to solve them. And generally problem solving is heavily underpinned. The ability to solve a problem and overcome something is heavily underpinned by your attitude towards it in the first place. So most people with objections, they lose the the, the war before it's even fought because they just look at it and they're like oh christ i've got to handle this thing whereas i'm like oh god thank god for that i'm really happy this person said that because it gives me an opportunity to push them over the edge um how you see them will determine a lot and you have to be relentless don't doesn't matter what someone says or what excuse he tries to give you if it's if it sounds like a fit and you can genuinely change their life then you should do everything you can and say anything you can within reason right within reason to get them overboard um and you should do it. So that's how I conduct discovery calls. Um, that's the Imperium agency sort of process. It's an SOP. Um, obviously there's low, I've got like three to four hour long training videos on each part of these processes in our program. And if you're interested, obviously you can click that funnel. Um, there will also be a link in the description to take you to a Facebook group. Um, you can join that one to basically get more content similar to this. Uh, obviously the process is designed to sell you things. It's our strategy is just to give you a lot of value so that you like us and then eventually want to buy something. But if you are an action taker and you want to solve problems quickly and you're not afraid of um, a salesperson who is pretty relentless in their approach, then you can always book a call. Um, if it's not fit like, and you, it doesn't make sense, then nobody will force you to buy anything. And nobody will force you to buy anything anyway from us. It's just like, I just don't understand the reluctance. If you've got a problem and we've got a solution, you shouldn't let anything stand in the way of you exploring that. No matter what your past experiences or financial situation are, we can probably help you. Um, and we've helped loads of people who haven't got any money start. And um, we've got all sorts of like RI guarantees and payment plans to make sure it happens. And I just don't see the reason for not exploring it. Like I book calls to people who reach out to me and then usually they have something that's so shit that I just tell them, I'm like, look, like I've booked sales calls before people cause, because sometimes it's fun and like, People reach out to me and they're like, oh yeah, I can help me get more appointments for Imperium Agency. And every, I'm usually like, no, but every now and then I've got like a spare hour, I'll just power move them and send them my calendar event. And then they'll book and then um, I'll show up and just I won't say anything. I'll be like, hi. And then I'll just watch them squirm and see how good they are. Because if someone's going to try and like 
help me book appointments, they need to know how to sell. Because if they don't know how to sell, they don't know how to book appointments. Because if you know how to sell, you kind of immediately know how to book appointments because the principles are pretty similar. So like if someone's ever trying to sell you something on how to book appointments and they don't take you through a nice, reliable process like this, then it's pretty evident that they can't help you. So like if, if I hop on, I'll do this all the time where like I hop onto these calls with people um, who are like, yeah, I can help you get more clients and more appointments. And then they hop on and I'm just like, hey. And then they'll be like, hi, how are you? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. And then you sort of just watch them panic because they realize that I'm not going to just be all nice to them. And then they'll just, they just have no process and it's just shit. And then I'm like, okay, well, how does it work? And then they'll break and they won't ask me any questions, which I immediately then see as a red flag because like prescription before diagnosis is malpractice, which is what most people do. Um, and then they'll just say, I'll be like, yeah, so we, we can do this. And yeah, and this is how it works. I'm like, okay, well, what's your guarantee? And they're like, oh, we don't have a guarantee. I'm like, why? And they're like, oh, because we, we can't like guarantee it. I'm like, well, why can't you guarantee it? And then they just fall apart. So like if someone, if someone's trying to sell you something and they don't have a guarantee, then just ask them why. And then like, just watch them just disintegrate in front of you. <laughs> like, because if you don't have a guarantee, it's because you don't trust what you do. And so like, I've had it before people who are like, yeah, I can get you loads of appointments. And it's like, you pay two grand a month and I'll generate you like 20 appointments a month. And I'm like, all right, how do I know you're actually gonna do it? And they're like, I'll oh, just trust me. I'm like, no, like I'll trust a contract and I'll trust like, stripe and i'll trust like all that shit but i'm not going to take your word for it because you're a person on the internet and you probably see me as a person on the internet so i totally I get the, the the sort of um fear from that but sometimes i like booking calls with people just to see what their process is like because sometimes i'll come across someone that's got a really good sales process and i'll be like god damn you know what you're doing i'm gonna buy this thing because fuck this is like awesome and you convinced me it's the right thing to do because i'm very difficult to sell um I think the other thing that people think with discovery calls is it's like, you'll probably sell as you buy. I don't because I've got enough experience to separate my buying and selling behaviors. However, like if you have to think about it all the time and if you're like, if you're too afraid to explore like options that are proven to work that can help you grow your agency and you go to businesses and you start asking them to explore options to help them grow their businesses, people won't book a call with you because you're too afraid to do it for your own business. So how on earth could you possibly expect other people to do it for theirs? And so the first step to actually solving the damn problem is to solve the problem for yourself. Like if you're helping other people get customers and you can't get your own customers, something's seriously wrong. And like you need to fix that problem first, otherwise you're never gonna have confidence in your ability to do it for other people. Because personal experience is um, projected onto interpersonal experience. And um, that's important. So that's just a little rant at the end. It wasn't really that relevant to this part of the video, but I'm in that mood where I'm sat in my dressing gown, I've got a cold, my, my nose is all stuffy and I just feel like sort of speaking some truth. And I like this YouTube channel because it helps me just get shit off my mind sometimes. Um, and some of you might not like it and there's a dislike button for that reason and that's fine. And if you don't like the video, you probably haven't made it this far to the end, so that's fine. I've also realized that algorithms only show videos that people will like. <laughs> Like if people are like, oh, why is, why do most videos I watch have such a high like ratio? It's because, well, algorithms are designed to only show you shit you like, otherwise you wouldn't watch them. So this is also a lesson in conversations. Look at how I've just gone on off a tangent. Now I'm talking about YouTube likes and dislikes when we were talking about discovery call shit. So that's evidence that you shouldn't use conversations in your sales. Um, but that's everything from me. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Um, don't turn your bell notifications on. In fact, if you have got your notifications on for anything to do with me, just turn them all off and just check back every now and then because I do upload a few times a week. The reason I don't want you to have your notifications on is because you've got more important shit to do than get distracted by my content. Um, and I'd rather you watch me when you want to, not when I want you to. So that's that. You can also like the video if you did like it and you can also comment if you want to comment anything or add anything. And I will um, see you in the next one. This, um, by the way, was actually a... Um, oh, shit. Let's just ignore that. Bit. I'm just listening to my house. Um, this video was actually a, um, if I'm not mistaken, a request on the last video. Um, so I'm just going to shout this person out real quick. Um, no, not this video. Let's have a look. I will. I will try and find out who this was. Um, <laughs> We will find this. Well, basically, I might not be able to find this now because I said I could, but it might have been a while back. Um, 
someone basically requested um, a video on discovery call structure. It might be this one, actually. I think it was this one here. Yeah, so Ross Cortez, mate. Thank you. Very sorry I don't take me some time. Um, but Ross, thanks for the suggestion, mate. Anybody else who... Um, let's just run, I'm recording this. Yes, as I type. Shout out to you. Right, so Ross, if you're watching this, mate, thanks for the suggestion. Anyone else who has other video suggestions, just let me know. And um, that's everything from me, guys. So apologies for the very sort of direct and pragmatic YouTube video today. I also apologize for not being well and basically just wearing my pajamas. But at the same time, I hope this delivers some value to you and I'm sure you can forgive me. So I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day.